Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. In today's video, we'll go over how to set up wall sliding in your side view projects, similar to the mechanic that we would see in a Mega Man game. We also recently saw this in one of the contest games, Hellcat Live, where there was a sliding jump mechanic as well. And while there will be many different ways to set this up, this will be just one way to get you started and get you pointed in the right direction. So with that said, let's dive right in. All right, so we will begin in the Objects tab. I've created a new controllable player object, so it gave me this template. If you are wanting a template that has walk, jump, and waiting, you can always right click, add an object, and after you name it, select the animation, you can just click Object Controlled by Input Device, and when you click OK, this will pop up. Now you'll have to change your motions, which I've already done. I've set them to walk, and I've set them to jump, and this is gonna be our base template and one thing I always feel is missing in this template is a false state so I'm just going to go and create that real quick drag down jump here copy and paste the action rename this to fall and I'm going to select the fall motion unselect jump and that should be it as far as the state goes I'm now going to click on this link since we don't need to link this one to waiting anymore I'm going to drag it to fall so now we've just kind of switched places there. I can drag fall over here a little bit. And I'm going to change this because the condition to be back into waiting is to be grounded. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back to waiting and I'm going to put this from fall because that's the condition we want fall to waiting is when the player is grounded on the default tile group which, by the way, real quick, if you needed to, you can change the group and specify it even more. How you would go about doing that is go to your project settings, group management, place a, add a uh, tile group management. And then you go to your tiles, you would select a tile, and then you can change the group right here. And that's how you can specify something different than the default tile. And the cool thing is, is that in the same sprite sheet, you can have multiple, uh, or you can have tiles with different tile groups. All right, so that's how you change that, just a little side thing there. But yeah, we want it to be grounded to go back to waiting. And now our link from jump to fall, we're gonna add a new link, and we're gonna select the condition jump peak reached. So when the jump has jumped as high as it can, that is when the condition will be met. And then we'll click OK. And we should now be going from jump to falling when we hit the height. And then back to waiting when we land on the ground. So let's try this again. Uh, jump up, we fall, we wait. We jump, fall, and then we go into waiting. All right, so that part's set up good. Now let's continue on. All right, so now I'm going to zoom out here. Give me a little more space. There we go. And I'm going to start by adding another action state. And I'll just copy one, let's just say from fall. I'll copy fall, and this is gonna be our wall slide, okay? And yeah, I have a motion here, or this uh, motion was provided, right? Where is it? Ledge hang, yeah, there we go. So now that we've created this state of motion, we'll start adding some links. We will go from jumping first, we'll set this one up here, and we're gonna have some condition checks for some input. And I'm going to add a left being pressed, and I'm gonna add right being pressed. And I'm gonna say or, because we don't want them both to have to be pressed to be able to wall slide. If you're moving right, we want just the right one to be pressed. And also I'm choosing pressed instead of on press because I want the condition to be constantly checking for the input. I don't want you to have to, we don't want to have the player have to press right to get on it. We want the player to already have been pressing right and that would work as well. Now there's some other checks that we have to add here. And the check that we want to add is going to be contact with tile wall detection. And specifically we're wanting to check the right side and the left side. So is the player's wall detection, is the right side of it touching a tile wall or is the left side of it touching a tile wall? And again, we're specifying default tile wall. 
Well, actually, since this is not checked, we're specifying any tile wall. If you wanted to set a specific one, you'd have to check this and select. All right, so since we're only using defaults, we'll just leave that. Hit OK. And then we definitely need to change this to all conditions met. So I'll click that right there. And now we can actually play test and start getting some kind of progress. We're going to have a lot more to do, but let's see what this does when we do this. All right, so I'll start from this ledge here and I'll be jumping and I can latch on. Um, we obviously don't go back to a weight state, so I'll have to reset here. Um, but one thing is, is that if I do jump and grab the ledge, you'll see uh, something interesting. You'll notice that I kept jumping. All right, so there's a few things that we need to tweak in our wall slide state. So we're gonna click on the wall slide and there's two things we need to change here. One, we need to reset the gravity so that when you jump and hang on a wall, you're not continuing the jump as your wall sliding down or supposed to be. And then two, we need to lessen the gravity so it's a more gradual slow down slide. And we can do that all in this state. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and this can be a very interesting uh, this is actually a good tip to know, is that when you need to reset gravity, you can just perform a jump, and you can just change the jump speed to 0%, and that will reset the gravity for the player. Now, the next thing we need to do is slow down the gravity, so we can check not affected by gravity, and this means that we're not going to be affected to gravity at all when it's set at 100%. So we want to still be affected by gravity, so we could change this to something like 80. Let's just try that. And now we can play test, and we will be getting some different results. So now we can jump, and you'll see that it stops as soon as we hit the wall. And it slides down a lot slower. So the state's looking good. If you wanted a slower slide, you would put this up either like this or change the number there. All right, so now that we have this state more what we want, let's create a link back to jump. And let's get these looking more straight here. And this condition is going to be checking if we press A again. So we'll just click A and on press. And we might wanna give it some uh, input forgiveness of 15 or so and hit OK there. So now when A button is pressed, and it will go back to jump, and then it will re-jump, and then you can wall slide again. Now this will show an issue of something that we need to change in this link. So let's see what's happening here, and what we need to prevent. So right now, yeah, you can jump on, but you can see how, how soon it latches on. You saw how quick it latched on, but now let's see something else. So if I jump up, get on, and keep jumping, you'll see that it just latches on again instantly. It doesn't really allow me to jump unless I just, like start moving out. So we need to change something for this link, and we need to add just a wait time, a simple wait time. So we're gonna add, after a certain amount of time passes, and I think 0.3 will be good here. And we want to and. So all this has to be true. And we'll click play test. So now let's try that same thing. Well, first off, let's just try it from here. So we'll jump and notice that it took a little bit to actually get on the wall. And to be honest, that's probably a good fill as far as the player goes. And now when we jump again, we have to jump a little bit before we actually grab on. So that's a much smoother uh, system already. All right, so the link from jump to wall slide is complete. Now let's copy this and paste from fall to wall slide. There will be a little change here. Uh, one, we do not need the weight. And the reason we don't need the weight is because we've already weighted in jump. So if it went to fall, that means that that weight already occurred. So we don't need a weight. But one thing we do need to make sure 
is along with checking for touching the left or right tile wall, we also want to check that we are not grounded. And so how we check if we're not grounded is by selecting the bottom tile wall there and clicking this gray button. And that means the opposite value of what's represented here. So the fact that we have check for if it's grounded and now that we have the gray box, we're actually saying if it's not grounded. And the reason we're checking if it's not grounded is because if we are touching the floor, we want it to go back to waiting, not to a wall slide. So it's just a preventative measure. Another thing that we can do here as well is we can come to this link and we can actually put its processing priority higher. And the higher processing priority, the first it is to run. So if this one has one of uh, processing order of one, and this one had a processing order of still zero, this one, if you're grounded, would win and it would go to waiting. Another thing to note too is that if you don't use processing order, then the order is automatically tied to the creation order of the links. So if you have three links, the first one that you created, that will have higher pri priority than the second one you created, which would have higher priority than the third one. So that's kind of how that priority link stuff works. And so if we look at this, this should be set up fine now and we can play test. And so now let's test from a falling state. So we'll jump, reach our peak and fall and latch on. And there we go. Now we can jump off. And one thing that's really interesting is, is you can kind of do this thing where you can jump off and, and re-grab really quick. Oh, sorry, I was jumping. You can actually do this, kind of like that. So we do have some other stuff to adjust. We need to have a weight, but we don't want the weight in this link. So we have to add that with another state. So how I'll create the state is I'll come grab this fall and I'll copy and paste it. And I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna give this one a longer name. I'm going to call it fall um, waiting to slide again. Something that's really descriptive that I will not forget when I see it. And we'll just bring this right here. Actually, I can bring it up a little bit because this is going to reach a few different states actually. And what we're going to do is we're going to link from wall slide to falling. You'll notice one of our issues is that when we're touching the, when we're grounded again, we don't go back to waiting. And since we don't have a direct link to waiting, this is where our check for if we're grounded will be to exit wall slide. So we'll add that one first. We're going to check if we are grounded. The next check that we need to add is the same type of check, a tile wall detection, but we're wanting to check if we are not touching a left or right tile wall. And how we do that again is by clicking the opposite value. So now that it's running that check, we want these both on or so that we're either grounded and it knocks us out or we're not touching a left or right tile wall and then it will throw us to fall. Now, the whole reason that we have this fall state, as I mentioned earlier, is to provide a weight for when you're falling. Let's just add this link back to falling right here. And let's just say change unconditionally. And again, we'll see what is happening when we press play here. We'll see what is happening. For one, I think now we will go to our weight state. There we go. Because we linked up here, we now have access to go back to wait. But we're still having that thing where you can do this, you can go in and out like this really quick, and that's not what we want. So in this state, we are going to provide a wait. We're gonna come up here, and all it's going to do is it's going to provide a small wait. I'm just gonna do 0.1, and we'll click OK. And we can play test that. And I think that will be all that we need.
we might need it a little more. Let's adjust that just a little more. 2.2. There we go. Yeah. So, so you're not just falling and relatching. You're kind of falling a little bit more. And that's how it should be. You also notice that you can slide all the way to the bottom. And... Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is the last thing that we need to do, and this is good to show this. You'll see that it stays in the falling state when you're grounded for that 0.2 seconds. So that's the last thing that we need to do is get rid of that little funny looking glitch thing or that because it's waiting, right? It's waiting 0.2 to get back into falling, and then it registers that you need to go to waiting. So all we need to do is we need to copy this link. And we need to add it here, paste, and move this to waiting. There's a few different ways we could do this, but this one is just more clear. It just it, it just makes more sense. You could also, well, let's just show you that this works first. So we're checking if it's grounded. That's what that link that we copied is. So we can go down, and then boom, it goes right to waiting. The other thing that you could do actually to get rid of this link is we could get rid of it and we could copy this. We could go to this link and we can paste it and we can click or. And now since this one is the higher priority, when this one becomes true, it will go into fall and instantly go to waiting. So we can see that we'll get the same result by doing that. And boom. So a couple different ways. I guess this one is a little cleaner. But if you wanted to just be sure that this goes to this as well, you could just have that separate link. So there is actually one more thing to go over here. And let me show you what's going wrong. And then this should be the last thing. So we can jump up here. And we can latch onto the wall from a falling state. But if you walk off a ledge you actually never go to that falling state. So we need to fix that real quick. And that's really simple. What we have to check is we can just copy this and we can paste this. Well, actually, let's do this way just to, since it is kind of getting a little cluttered, let's create a shortcut of the false state. And let's move it over here. And then let's click this button right here that will let us see uh, what state is what. If you notice the shortcut also highlights when the false state or when the uh, parent action is selected. And now we can click this link and we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it from waiting to fall. And all we're going to do is remember this link is checking if the if the uh, object is grounded. Well, if you walk off a ledge, then we want to also check and make sure if it's not grounded. And if it's not grounded, go to fall. So that's what we're going to do here. So I click the gray button to make it opposite value. Now I'm going to copy and click walk, paste it. And now we have our system where you can walk off, it goes to fall, and then you can latch on. So I'm going to turn this option off so we can see everything and do one final play test. And I can walk off and latch on and get up to the top here. And it worked. So yeah, just uh, one more thing that needed to uh, go over uh, for this to be more complete. There'll be some stuff you'll have to add to for your specific project, but for the most part, this will get you started. So that does it for this video. Hope you got something out of it. You can add some cool wall slides to your side view project. Quick shout out to Macbeth, who is the lead designer and developer for Timothy and the Tower of Mew. He let me use some of his tile sets and character motions so that I could make this tutorial come to life. Feel free to comment below on tutorials you would like to see in the future, and like, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. With that said, I'll see you guys at the next video.